Hey guys, BJ from Christie's RV. Today we're gonna go through the 2013 Jayco Eagle 334 RBTS. Start up front, you have a large pass-through storage area. This is accessible from underneath the bed as well. So the master bed, if you open it up, lift it up, I'll show you that on the inside, you can access this area too. On the front, you have your power jack. There's a spot here for the emergency handle, so if this isn't working properly, there is a handle that you put here that you can manually crank it up and down. So you have your up and down, and you have your light here. Maybe 12 volt battery. Behind this, there's four buttons on each corner. That opens up and that's your propane tanks. So you have two 30 pound propane tanks and you have a dual crossover regulator. And what this does is allows you to open both tanks. When one empties, it'll automatically switch over to the other tank and start using that propane. When you, when you notice that one is empty, you can flick the switch here, go to this tank, take the hose off, and you can bring the tank in, get it filled, and put it back on. Once this one's empty, it'll switch back over, and vice versa. You also have LED lights here on the front. There's a switch just below here for those. This is the other side of the pass-through storage. This is the handle I said for the um, power jack. If it's not working, manual crank. And you have your stabilizer jack handle. And you have your 30 amp power cord. And there's about 35 feet of that there. So here's your stabilizer jacks. You have one of those in all four corners. So you can use that handle to crank that down. What you want to do is get the trailer as level as possible first, and then crank those down to stabilize the trailer. Don't use those to actually level the trailer. Just in front of the slide here, you have your holding tank drain right there. You have your release right here for the gray water, or sorry, black water, which is your toilet. Farther back, are the two gray water ones, which are for your sink and shower. Up here is a hose connection. So what this is, is a tank flush. So when you're draining your system, you have your sewage hose connected, your valves open, you can hook a hose onto this and what that'll do is help you flush through everything and clean out the system a little bit better. Go around in the back. Back side, you have that slide. This slide isn't open yet. That'll open right there. You have your furnace exhaust right here. That gets very hot, so you don't want to put nothing in front of that. Keep that area open. You have your 30 amp plug for that cord I showed you at the front. That's simply slide it in, give it a twist, and then lock the ring on. There is a little blue indication light right here, so when it's connected, you'll see that little blue light showing you that it's powered up and ready to go. Inside the rear bumper is your hose for your sewage drain. You have your hot water tank back here. So there's your drain plug here. Anytime you're gonna drain the tank, you wanna make sure you release the pressure using the pressure release valve or leaving one of the taps open inside the trailer. You don't wanna try to drain it with the pressure on the tank. And here on this corner is your satellite cable input for TV. You have an outdoor shower, hot and cold water, and it has a handheld handheld unit so you can wash your feet and stuff. So you have that in there. You have a city water connection here, so that's just a garden hose if you have pressured water wherever you are. And you also have a potable water fill up. So you're holding tank for clean water, you can fill that up from this area. And that right here is your drains for that holding tank. So this is how you drain the water right here. 
right here is a gas connection let's pull the little rubber off it's a quick connect hose and that quick connect hose is right here stored in the drawer and that is for your outdoor stove so there's a connection right here and they're just quick connects so you just pull them slide them on and click it on so you that one there into there and that'll give propane to your your stove and that's a two burner stove to light that you just turn the dial on and light it with a, a lighter barbecue lighter or whatever and the outdoor kitchen is also a sink and a large fridge no freezer in this one just a fridge and you have lights and more storage. On the outside of this slide out, you have a, a satellite output. So if you want to put a TV outside, if you have a table here or something, you want to put the TV. So if the cable's hooked on the other side, it's also connected here. So you can plug in here and have the TV outside. And you have AC plug as well. This vent here is the back of the fridge. You want to keep this area free and clear as well. It does need proper airflow for it to work properly, so you don't want to have that blocked or anything leaned up against that. And then there's also another low point drain right here. Can't see it, but two hoses under there. And those are from the inside. For when you're draining your water tank, or not your water tank, sorry, your water lines, you open those and that'll drain the system. You also have another AC plug here. Outdoor speakers, outdoor light, and a power awning. So on the inside, you walk in right here. You have a 12 volt plug, I guess for charging your phone or something like that. And you wanna stick it in a little thing here. But behind this, is your control panel for everything. So you have your monitoring panel, which has the button for your water pump. So if you have the potable water tank full and you need water, that's your pump. You have your gas and your electric for your hot water tank. So if you're using propane, that's your button there. And if you're plugged into 110 AC, you have electric there. And this tells your levels of your battery, fresh water, black water, that stuff. You have your power awning button in and out. You have your two slides. The top one here is for that slide. And then you have your other slide in and out, and that will be your kitchen slide. So make sure when you are operating these, the slides go all the way out for it to create a seal, or it has to be all the way in. Do never never use them when they're halfway. So when they're out, you'll hear that clicking sound. That means it's all the way out. You also have two light switches, one for your outside lights and one for your inside lights. That's behind that little door there. So we have your fridge here. You have your automatic. So what that does is it searches for electricity first, 110 AC. If that's not present, it'll automatically switch to gas, which it just did, and it will light off the propane. Or you can have it strictly gas. If you know that you're not plugging it in, you wanna run right off the gas, you can do that as well. Has your temperature setting, one to five, and your fridge. And this one has the freezer. The three burner stove. You're on your valves here to turn them on and off, and you have a sparker to light it. You also have your oven, you have a pilot, you hold that in, and you light it with a lighter. And that's right underneath the bottom there. Back here, you light that with a lighter, but holding that button in until the flame comes. Hold it for a few more seconds after that. Once that lights up, then you can release that and you can turn it on and you're ready to go. sink more lighting you do have plugs underneath they are GFI protected one there one there a 
Uh, before we go in the back room, you have your thermostat here. This controls your air conditioning, a fan just to recirculate the air, and of course your heat. Set your desired temperature, and then you can have your fan on low or high and automatic, or you can just have it on. Inside this room is your bunkhouse. As you can see, you can't get in, there's a slide here. So you reach around the corner, there's a button right here. Press that. That'll slide out. And again, once it's all the way out, you hear that clicking sound. That means it's all the way out. It's reached its limit. Just like that. So you have an upper bunk, another upper bunk here. This one does fold out of the way. It's on a piston system, so you just lift it up like that, and then you can use the table. And this dinette also goes down to a bed, so you just lift the table off the legs, set the table down into the, the track, and then you can adjust the cushions, and that turns into another bed. Lighting, lots of lighting. You have a ladder here for the upper bunk. You have your converter here, so you have all your AC breakers, all your DC fuses. If one is to blow, you know, that's where you replace it. There's a little red indication lights here along the side. So when it's plugged in and then something happens, you can blow a fuse. Usually that red light comes on and that'll let you know exactly which one's not working or if the breaker trips. So if something's not powered, come check here first. There's access here, four screws. That's access to the hot water tank. So when it's time to winterize, you need to switch the valves over. That's where you're gonna go. So that's your bunk hose. And you have your dinette here, same thing. This one here operates a little differently, but it does go down into a bed. So there's a bar right here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna slip that out. And then this just, a little bit of pressure, and it folds down into place. So you just lift the cushions up, fold it, push it down into the track, and you're all set. Same thing, just lift it back up. Make sure it's all the way up. And then there's that handle. Just want to flip that back up and make sure it locks into the groove there. Lots of storage areas. Under the island. The sink. Buttons here for your lights. Also one here for this wall sconce. couch underneath is a storage unit it's like a little ottoman plus storage and this does fold down into a bed as well just like a futon just lift up and pull it out you have your TV TV you have your stereo system here has your DVD player has your indoor outdoor speakers so you have speakers a b and c c is your outdoor a is your main area b is the bed front bedroom then you have your dvd player cd player set alarms it's got an auxiliary input earphone output usb and that goes into the front bedroom the door here that closes there's also access to the washroom through here, a sliding door, privacy. There's a little strap that holds that in place for when traveling. You can see that right here, just a snap. That keeps the door back so that you know it doesn't roll around while you're driving and break it or damage it. Your front bedroom, 
more lights there. Lots of storage. Like you said, you do have access to that outside storage there. Large corner shower. Toilet. There's a pedal here for flushing. Just push on that. It flushes the toilet. Two switches here. One for the light. One for the fan. And then your main door brings you back out. So you do have access through there. We have an AC unit on the roof, so once you turn it on with the thermostat, you can adjust the air pressure. So if you want more in this room, you can open up these vents. If you want more to flow through these vents, you simply just close these, and that'll give more pressure throughout the rest of the trip. We also have a crank here for the awning, or not on the awning, I'm sorry, for the antenna. So if you're hooking up just this cable to the antenna and you're trying to get a channel, that's where you can adjust it. It'll crank up and then you can turn it. And you have your smoke detector here. Make sure you test that every once in a while. Make sure that's working. Same thing with your CO2 detector here. There's a test button. Make sure you're testing that regularly as well. You also have your fire extinguisher right by the doorway. In case there's an emergency, it's there for you. I think that is pretty much everything. of everything and that's it congratulations on the trailer hope you enjoy it